Welcome to my channel, Management Accounting Made Easy. This is part six of standard costing and variance analysis. In this part six, we are going to cover the sales variances. So total sales variance can be subdivided into sales price variance and sales volume variance. Then sales volume variance can be subdivided into sales mix variance and sales quantity variance. So we are going to see all of these variances. Here we are going to see the sales price variance. The selling price variance compares the standard selling price with the actual selling price. This variance will show the change in profitability due to this change in selling price. So the selling price variance could be either favorable or adverse. Favorable sales price variance means actual selling price is greater than the standard selling price. On the other hand, adverse selling price variance means the actual selling price is lower than the standard selling price. Now we'll see the possible reasons for a favorable sales price variance. The product differentiation through better quality products or brand loyalty. Um, the company might have done some aggressive marketing campaign um, and sales promotion or maybe less competitors in the market or the pricing strategies used for example the penetration pricing um, or there might be no substitutes available in the market so the company companies can charge higher prices we are going to see the possible reasons for an adverse sales price variance. If there is a severe competition in the market, then the companies cannot sell at a higher price. Or fall in demand. This may be due to the introduction of new product by the competitors or poor quality products of the company or government regulation restricts the increase in selling price or maybe economic condition like uh, depression, so people cannot afford to pay higher prices, or poor planning of the company, um, maybe due to not enough market research done. So these could be the possible reasons for an adverse sales price variance. Now we'll see who is responsible for the sales price variance. Generally, the sales division is responsible, but not all the times. Say, for example, if the production department produces poor quality products, so here the responsibility lies on the production department. Or if there is a government regulation where the company cannot increase its selling prices, this situation is beyond the control of the sales division. So not all the times the sales division is responsible for the sales price variance. Why do companies calculate the sales price variance? First of all, to decide the right selling price. In general, we know companies calculate variances to take corrective action. Here, by calculating the sales price variance, Companies can control their cost in order to achieve the target profit. So they can set a telling, selling price and they can control their cost in order to achieve their target profit. So here we are going to calculate the sales price variance using an example. This is another easy variance to calculate. So all we need to do is to compare 
the standard selling price with the actual selling price. Then we need to times that one by the actual number of units sold. So as I told you before, if the standard selling price is higher than the actual selling price, then there will be an adverse sales price variance and vice versa. So we look at this question. Stylish Tile Limited was planning to sell 7,500 boxes of kitchen tiles at $40 per box for the month of March. Actual sales for the month of March were 9,000 boxes, giving a total sales revenue of $337,500. So the question is, calculate the sales price variance for the month of March. Okay, we'll calculate the standard total selling price. So they have sold 9,000 boxes of tiles. So according to the standard, they should have charged $40 per box. So the standard total selling price should have been 9,000 times $40, which is $360,000. But the actual total selling price is $337,500. So the selling price variance is $22,500 adverse because the actual total selling price is lower than the standard total selling price. So the sales price variance is $22,500 adverse. We are going to see the sales volume variance. Sales volume variance means we need to compare the number of units, which is the budgeted number of units with the actual number of units sold. So when you compare the budgeted number of units with the actual number of units, you will either get an adverse um, volume variance or a favorable volume variance. Now, to convert that into money value, we need to see what type of costing the company is using. If the company is using absorption costing, then we need to times the difference by the budgeted profit per unit. And if the company uses marginal costing, the difference will be multiplied by the contribution per unit. Sometimes the exam questions, the examiner will give you the company is using absorption costing. Then we should know we need to times that by budgeted profit per unit. Or if the examiner gives uh, marginal costing is used, then we should know we need to times that by budgeted contribution per unit. So sales volume variance. We know Volume means the number of units sold. So the sales volume variance helps to measure the effect on profit or contribution due to the change between the budgeted sales unit and the actual sales units. This sales volume variance will help to find out whether the company's actual sales have overachieved or underachieved compared to the budgeted number of units sold. When calculating this variance, we always times the difference between the budgeted number of units and the actual number of units by either budgeted profit per unit or budgeted contribution per unit. We'll see why we times this by budgeted profit per unit or budgeted contribution per unit. This is because when the sales volume changes, the production cost also will change. Therefore, the right measure is to use the budgeted profit per unit or the budgeted contribution per unit. Now, favorable sales volume variance. This means the company has sold more units than budgeted or 
they have sold higher mix or proportion of high profitable products, thereby achieved more profits or contribution than budgeted. So please note, to get the sales volume favorable variance, if companies sell higher mix or higher proportion of their profitable products, they can get favorable sales volume variance. Now we'll see the reasons for sales volume variance, favorable sales volume variance. Reduction in competition, thereby the company was able to sell more units. Or the company has decreased its selling price, therefore the demand for its products has increased. Or relaxation in government restriction. So these could be the reasons for a favorable sales volume variance. We'll see the adverse sales volume variance. So Adverse sales volume variance means the company has sold less number of units than budgeted or they have sold more lower mix of less profitable products. Okay, so they might have sold higher volume of less profitable products. Then they will get adverse sales volume variance because it depends on the profitability of the product. So if a company sells high volume, that means high number of units of low profitable products, then it will get an adverse sales volume variance. So we'll see the reasons for an adverse sales volume variance severe competition. So the company may not be able to sell the number of units uh, required by the company or high sales prices compared to its competitors or poor quality products or low demand for the products or government restrictions. So these could be the reasons for an adverse sales volume variance. Sales mix variance. Sales mix variance occur when a company sells different types of or mix of products. Sales mix variance measures the impact or effect on profit or contribution due to the change in actual sales mix compared to the standard sales mix. Sales mix variance can be either a favorable sales mix variance or an adverse sales mix variance. Favorable sales mix variance occur when a company sells high proportion of more profitable products. Now we'll see the reasons for a favorable sales mix variance. High demand for high margin products or increased marketing effort to high profitable products. Decrease in demand or supply for lower profitable products. So these could be the possible reasons for a favorable sales mix variance. Now we'll see the adverse sales mix variance. Adverse sales mix variance means higher proportion of less profitable products are sold in the sales mix than expected. The sales mix profit or contribution variance can be an adverse variance even though a company's lower margin product sales increased to more than 95%. So in order to get a favorable sales mix variance, the company has to sell high proportion of more profitable products mix. 
Now we'll see the reasons for an adverse sales mix variance. Um, demand for lower margin products has increased or increased marketing effort to lower profitable products or decrease in demand or supply for higher profitable products. Scarcity of raw materials or labor to produce higher profitable products or the decrease in uh, disposable income of the con consumers. We have seen sales volume variance has two subdivisions. One is sales mix variance, the other one is sales quantity variance. So we are going to see the sales quantity variance here. This sales quantity variance occurs when there is a mix of products sold by the entity. So we'll see how to calculate the sales quantity variance. Under absorption costing, we have to take actual sales at standard mix, take away the budgeted sales units. So we will get the quantity variance in units. Because this is under absorption costing, we need to times this by budgeted profit per unit. We'll see how to calculate the sales quantity variance under marginal costing actual sales at standard mix take away the budgeted sales unit so we will get the sales quantity variance in units because this is under marginal costing to convert this into money value we need to times this by budgeted contribution per unit when we do an example this will become more clear to us Sales quantity variance continues. Sales quantity profit or contribution variance measures the effect on profit or contribution from selling different total actual quantity of units compared to the budgeted total quantity. As usual, like any variance calculation, Sales quantity variance also, we may have a favorable sales quantity variance or an adverse sales quantity variance. Favorable sales quantity variance occurs when actual sales at standard mix is greater than the budgeted sales. This means that the company has earned more profit or contribution than, than budgeted. On the other hand, adverse sales quantity variance occurs when the actual sales at standard mix is lower than the budgeted sales, then there will be an adverse sales quantity variance. This means that the company has earned less profit or contribution than budgeted. So now we'll see the causes for the sales quantity variance. Changes in government regulations or changes in production costs. For example, unexpected price increase in raw materials will force the company to increase its selling price, which will in turn affect the sales quantity or market competition. We are going to do a small example in order to get a clear picture of sales volume variance, sales quantity variance and sales mix variance. So we look at this example. Healthy Living Company sells fresh fruit and vegetable juices budgeted an actual data for the month of March for two types of fruit juices is given below. 
So they have given the budgeted and actual data for melon juice and the budgeted selling price per juice is $2.75 and also they have given the budgeted and actual data for the pineapple juice and the budgeted selling price per pineapple juice is $2.85 and they have given the budgeted and actual revenue and also they have given the budgeted profit to sales ratio melons budgeted profit to sales ratio is 22.5 percent and pineapple juices profit to sales ratio is 30 percent so we need to calculate the sales volume sales mix and sales quantity variances as we know sales mix varies plus the sales quantity variance should be equal to the sales volume variance. So we are going to calculate the sales volume variance for our example. So melon juice and pineapple juice. So we know for the volume variance, we need to compare the budgeted number of units with the actual number of units. The budgeted number of units for melon juice is 7,250. And for the pineapple juice, it's 9,500 units. But the question says the actual units for melon juice is 8,750 units. And for the pineapple juice is 7,350 units. So if we take the difference between the two, the melon juice is 1,500 units favorable and pineapple juice is 2,150 units adverse. As usual, we need to convert this into money value so we need to times these units by the standard profit per juice. If you look at the question, the question says budgeted profit to sales ratio for melon juice is 22.5%. So the standard profit per melon juice is 22.5% times the selling price of the melon juice which is $2.75. So 22.5% times 2.75, you will get 62 cents per juice. And if we do the same calculation for the pineapple juice, the standard profit per pineapple juice, the question says 30% of the selling price. So 30% times 2.85, then we will get 86 cents. These all standard profits are rounded up to two decimal places. So the sales volume variance for melon juice is $930 favorable. And the sales volume variance for the pineapple juice is $1,849 adverse. So the total sales volume variance will be $919 adverse, which is $930 favorable plus $1,849 adverse. So when we add these two together, we will get a total sales volume variance of $919 adverse. Here we are going to calculate the sales mix variances, which is similar to the material mix variances calculation, which I have done in part five of standard costing and variance analysis. The link is given below in the description for part five. So now we look at the question, the budgeted and the actual data given and the melon and the pineapple juice and everything is given. 
budgeted profit to sales ratio given. So we need to calculate the standard mix and we need to compare the standard mix with the actual number of units sold. So we will get the mix variance in number of units. Then we need to times that by standard profit per unit. So we will get the mix variance in dollars. Now we'll see the melon juice and the pineapple juice and the total. Now, in total, they have sold 16,100 units of melon juice plus the pineapple juice. Now we'll see out of that 16,100 units, how many units they should have sold as melon ju uh, juice. According to the standard, if you look at the budgeted data, melon juice 7,250 plus the pineapple juice 9,500 altogether 16,750. So according to the budget, if they sell 16,750 units, out of that, 7,250 units should be the melon. So we will calculate if they sell 16,100 units in total, how many units the melon juice should have been. So 7,250 divided by the total budgeted number of units, which is 16,750, times it by the total actual number of units they sold, which is 16,100. So if you do that, you will get 6,969 units. But the actual units sold is 8,750 units. So the mix variance for the melon juice in units is a favorable 1,781 units. Now we need to convert that into money value. We need to times that by standard profit per unit, which is 22.5% of the melon juices price, which is $2.75. So the standard profit per unit for the melon juice is 62 cents. So the mix variance in dollars is 1,781 units favorable, times it by 62 cents, you will get $1,104.22 now we'll move on to the pineapple juice. According to the standard, if you sell 16,750 units in total, out of that, 9,500 units should be the pineapple juice. But in total, they have actually sold 16,100 units. So according to the standard, the pineapple juice's standard mix is 9,500 divided by the budgeted total number of units, which is 16,750, times it by the actual total number of units sold, which is 16,100. So for the pineapple juice, the standard mix is 9,131. But the actual unit sold is 7,350. So the mix variance for the pineapple juice is $1,781 adverse. Now we need to time that times that by the standard profit per unit for the pineapple juice, which is 30% of $2.85. That's the selling price of the pineapple juice. So the standard profit per unit will be 86 cents. So if you times 1,781 units at first, times it by 86 cents, you will get $1,531.66 at first. So if you add these two together, we will get $2,000. 
the mixed variance in dollars will be $427.44 adverse. So that is our sales mix total variance. Now, two things I would like to point here. The first one is, if you look at the sales mix variance, the total sales mix variance is an adverse $427.44. If you see why, because the profitable product, which is the pineapple juice, has an adverse mix variance. That's why the most profitable product has an adverse sales mix variance. That's why our overall mix variance is also an adverse $427.44. Another thing, mix variance in units, if you look at the total, is zero. Why? Because the standard mix total is 16,100, same as the actual mix total. So if you take away one from the other, your mix variance in units always will be zero. That is, the mix variance total in units will be always zero. Here we are going to calculate the sales quantity variance. There are two methods, so we'll see the method one first. So out of the two methods, you can pick whichever method you like. So method one is, um, we'll see how to do the method one. So the budgeted and the actual data given. So first we need to take the standard quantity. Then we need to take the actual quantity in standard mix, which we have, we would have calculated in our mix variance calculation. So the difference you will get um, variances in units. Then you times it by the standard profit per unit, you will get the quantity variance in dollars. So we'll see the melon juice. The budgeted data is 7,250 units. That is the budgeted quantity for the melon juice. But the actual quantity in standard mix, if you refer the mix variance calculation, that is 6,969 units. I'll quickly say how we got this one. 7,250 divided by the budgeted total, which is 16,750, times it by the actual total, which is 16,100. So, if you take the variances in units, there is an adverse variance of $281. We are going to times that by the standard profit per unit, which we know it's 62 cents. So 281 units adverse times it by the 62 cents, we will get $174.22 adverse. Now we are going to do the same calculation for our pineapple juice. The standard quantity according to the question is 9,500 units. And the actual quantity in standard mix from the mix variance is 9,131 units. So if you get the difference, which is 369 units adverse. So times that by 86 cents, so we will get $317.34 adverse. So our total start sales quantity variance is $491.56 adverse. As I mentioned before, we can cross-check our calculation. That is our sales volume variance which is $919 adverse, should be equal to the total of sales mix variance, which is $427.44 adverse, plus the sales quantity variance, which is 
$491.56 address. So our calculations are correct. So this is the method one of sales quantity variance calculation. We are going to see sales quantity variance calculation method two. This is the method I prefer, I personally prefer. Okay, this is more logical to me. Say you need to take the actual total sales quantity, which is 8,750 plus the 7,350, which is 16,100 units. Budgeted sales quantity is 7,250 plus the 9,500, which is 16,750 units. So the sales quantity variance in units is 650 units adverse. So up to this point is very easy. Now we must times this by the standard weighted average margin per unit. So we must calculate the standard weighted average margin per unit, which is not at all a difficult calculation. So as we know, the budgeted profit per unit of melon juice is 62 cents. So 62 cents times the number of uh, budgeted number of melon juices is 7,250. So that is the budgeted total profit for the melon juice plus 86 cents for the pineapple juice, that is the budgeted profit per unit, times it by 9,500 units. So if you times 86 cents by the 9,500, you will get the budgeted total profit per, um, budgeted total profit for the pineapple juice. So if you add them together, divided by the total number of units, which is 16,750. Remember the total number of budgeted units. Then you will get the standard weighted average margin per unit is 7, 0.7561. So the sales quantity variance here, if you times 650, times it by 0.7561, you will get $491.47 adverse variance. Now, if you look at here, there is a small rounding up difference, which is $0.09, which is acceptable in the exam. Thank you for watching. Hope you would have enjoyed these um, sales variances. If you like it, please like, share and subscribe. I'll see you in part 7 of Standard Costing and Variances.